So there's like no archaeologist or anybody in academia that will acknowledge or accept these type of artifacts. Uh, the common theme is they're all claiming them to be just natural rocks. They call them geofacts. However, there are like literally thousands of collectors all over the world that collect this type of rock art, these type of artifacts. And yet, all the um, academics and archaeologists claim that we're all suffering collectively from pareidolia. They literally immediately dismiss the notion that ancient people carved images in stones. However, they'll accept petroglyphs, but they aggressively reject this form of rock art. All the images presented in this video are in fact artifacts. These are all representations of rocks or stones that were modified by humans. So what probably happened is these ancient people recognized shapes that looked like maybe an animal or a person and they modified them. Um, maybe it was just to carve out an eye, a nose or a mouth. And I think that's part of the huge disconnect here with, with people who have a problem with these because none of these were made by skilled craftsmen. Rather, they were made by all members of, of these communities. They all created art. Similar to what we do today, we create art, whether drawing, paintings, you know, film, music, whatever. It's just part of um, the human experience. It's engraved in human behavior. Are we all good at it? No, some are and others aren't. And the same thing is true for the ancient people, basically the same type of human we are. So when the ancient humans or these ancient humans move beyond the nomadic, like hunting and gathering lifestyle, they probably lived in groups. They weren't like exclusively dependent on being nomadic for survival. So they had downtime. And they created art by carving rocks or stones. In all probability, most of these items, these uh, rock art figures, were probably created at night, um, maybe in front of a fire. But based on the design, when you're observing them, it's relatively difficult to see the actual image or the details of the image in the daylight. But when night comes and maybe you have moonlight or starlight, you can see a lot more detail because these people that carved them, these ancient people that carved them, had knowledge of how to manipulate shadows and use contrast to make their, their images come to life. It's literally a 3D creation. Now to the average person, they probably appear very primitive and you know crude, but in reality, they're extremely sophisticated. It's just mind boggling to me that people absolutely miss this. Even when you show them, they're like, what am I looking at? But it's there. You know, what I've learned through the years of studying this too, is that with the experts, quote unquote experts, if it's not a tool or an item made from flakes, hard stone, such as chert, it's not acknowledged or again, it's not even recognized. And that to me is pretty sad because you could learn, we could learn collectively so much about these ancient people, you know, based on their designs. Certainly you obtained a lot more information from these than you would from a arrowhead. And the images depicted here were made, you know, several thousand years before the adoption of the bow and arrow in the Great Lakes region. The design, the design patterns are remarkably similar in all geographical areas, including the Americas and Europe. We know this because of things like Facebook. We can see what people are finding in different states and in Canada and in you know Great Britain, uh, the Netherlands, Germany. So one of the wild cards in collecting these type of artifacts is finding um, a fair amount of these little carvings that have a primate type appearance, whether it's an ape, a Sasquatch, maybe an early hominid. So we really have to question, you know, how old are these creations? 
We can speculate to when the artifact might have been created based on the image that's carved in the rock. For example, here we see a, a few of the um, wolf slash bear type artifacts found here in Michigan. So when you're looking at the bear carved, is it a shorter snout? Perhaps a short faced bear, or cave bear? I guess the overwhelming theme here is to associate like these attributes to natural occurrences it seems to be extremely improbable even to me like ludicrous you know go to any archaeological site open your eyes study the anomalies in the rocks there's these repeating patterns over and over look at these anomalies from a variety of angles under different lighting the most frequently occurring item depicted in rock art are the um, proboscideans or mammoth mastodons these Ice Age megafauna went extinct about 11,000, 12,000 years ago. Does that somehow confirm that an Ice Age culture created these elephant-like carvings? No, I wouldn't say so, but there's something to these a Pleistocene megafauna that was very important to the ancient people, whether these were paleo people or people who obtained this knowledge from maybe oral traditions, oral teachings. It's definitely not rocket science, and I gotta tell you, we are not crazy. And I think the most important thing I would say is realize or understand that not all artifacts are flaked hardstone tools. There's a lot more to ancient history than frickin' arrowheads. 